Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your favorite nonfiction author, Matt D. Talford. Uh, checking in with you on Friday, what's today's date? November the 5th, is it? 6th? I think it's the 6th. Anyway, um, just a little bit rattled right now. I just got a call from my bank's credit card fraud division telling me that somebody in Miami tried to buy $190 worth of uh, merchandise at a certain store. I won't say that name. I don't want to get anybody upset or anything like that. So I won't say the name of the company. But anyway, I'm a little bit rattled, but uh, not really rattled, just, you know, a little bit disgusted because now I have to go and redo all of my accounts online that uh, I get regular things drafted from on a monthly basis. So it's a little bit of an annoyance, but uh, at the same time, I'm pretty happy that they, I, they uh, made that phone call and that I'm going to be reimbursed those funds that were charged against my credit card. So anyway, folks, uh, credit card fraud is real. If you haven't been hit with it yet, it's just a matter of time. It's going to happen eventually. Uh, I don't wish that on anybody, but the reality is, is that it happens. Um, I, I had gone, this is the first time it's ever happened to me, and I've been a credit card holder for, gosh, I mean, years. I, I can't even count. I don't want to tell my age. Anyway, um, if you read my book, you can probably figure out what age I am anyway. So anyway, um, the reason I'm doing this video today is uh, I had some friends tell me, hey, Matt, you know what? Your book is great, but I don't feel like you're telling your story enough. Uh, folks want to hear your story. They want to know how you're doing today. They want to know what's going on with you. How do you maintain? How do you do what you do? Do you do the stuff that you talked about in your book? Are you still doing it four years later? Um, the answer to all of those questions is... Yeah, I mean, I'm doing great. Uh, I still do everything that I uh, talk about doing in my book. Uh, the things I do to maintain my body, my fitness level, um, the things that I do to try to address what I feel like uh, will help me stay out of that, uh, you know, not have to get jumped back into that C word war anymore. Uh, praise God for that. Anyway, um, as you can tell, I still don't like to talk about it. It's been four years. <laughs> I still don't like to talk about it, but I'm talking about it because uh, somebody needs to hear about it. So anyway, without further ado, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to introduce you to uh, one of the healthy soups I like to eat. Um, I'm kind of hungry and my body is looking for some nutrition. Um, it's a rainy day today here and uh, so I'm probably not going to be in a tennis court. So uh, and I'm, I won't be out walking or running in the rain. I did enough of that in the army. So uh, kudos to all you folks out there that run in the rain. Keep doing it. God bless you. You can have it. I did it. Uh, when when you when you when you have to do it in the uniform, uh, you're not necessarily a fan of it once you're out. Unless you're running a race or something, then you know if I'm in a race and there's a bunch of people doing it, then I'm I'm going to show what I'm built uh, or show how I'm built, show what I'm made of, and all that hardcore army stuff. Right. Anyway, I'm babbling. Uh, let me get on to it. So I'm going to be introducing you in just a moment to the tool, one of the tools that I've I've used ever since I was. Uh, diagnosed back in 2011 and actually I bought this tool before that I bought this tool it's called a it's a blender it's a high-speed blender I use the blend tech some of you use the Vitamix some of you use the ninja use whatever works for you but today what I'll be doing is I'll be making a, a healthy carrot soup and uh, give me just a moment and I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what I got in there okay folks so we're back and what you're looking at here is my blend tech total blender uh, this is one amazing piece of equipment um, the guys at Blendtec, you guys, and I'm not, uh, first of all, I want you to understand, I'm not paid by Blendtec to do this. This is uh, actually when I went out and bought this machine in November of 2010, I was going out shopping for a Vitamix. And uh, I went to Costco to look for it. And the thing that they had at the time was uh, they didn't have the Vitamix display, but they did have a Blendtec guy there. So I said, okay, I've been looking at these machines online now for a few months. And uh, I've been comparing them back and forth, and uh, I d decided that the Vitamix was probably going to work better for me. But the Blendtec guy sold me because of uh, the size of this this thing. It's not very big at all, as you can see. I am curling it. Um, it's not very heavy. It's lightweight. It fits underneath my counter, and um, I'll show you that here in just a minute. But uh, it's a really a solid piece of equipment, and I'll I'll get closer here so you can uh, let me block out the light. You can see that this is a one button machine here and you can push the button to hit whatever you want to make. And there's a pretty cool uh, cookbook that comes with this thing. Um, sometimes I use the cookbook, but most often I don't. Now, as you can see, the, the label on it is a little bit weathered and beaten, but this will tell you 
that I've used this thing quite a bit. And one of the other things I like about the blend tech I'm going to show you right now is when you turn it on, it shows you how many times you've run this machine uh, since you've had it. So I bought this machine in November of 2010 and I have used this machine now. I've run it 3,793 times. So I get it. I put a lot of miles on this thing. I love it. But anyway, uh, I'm going to be making soup. Okay. And when you hit the soup button on this thing, it, it, it uh, blends at the highest speed for about 90 seconds. Now, uh, uh, well, let me, let me go back. Let me back up here. So let me show you what I got in here. This is just a recipe I made up. Uh, people that know me personally know I love to cook and uh, so what I did here is uh, I didn't I went off the script. I didn't use the cookbook. I have in here about eight ounces of water I uh, peeled and cut up some organic carrots that I get from my local organic uh, Grocery store or health healthy grocery store. Not everything in there is organic um, Won't get into the organic versus non-organic right now I'll talk to you about that later or maybe one day. I'll have my wife talk to you about it She's uh, she's really big on that stuff. So and she can tell you which vegetables and fruits are okay to eat or uh, eat non-organic and which ones you absolutely should go organic with. But anyway, um, so uh, Blendtec, uh, this is the, the the smaller machine that I, well, not smaller machine, smaller jar. There's a bigger jar that they use with this called the Wild Side. Uh, there's no reason for me to use that today because I'm only making enough soup for me. Uh, <laughs> as one of the, my favorite lines from the movie Training Day went, uh, she's got to put her own work in if she wants some soup today. So sorry, uh, I know that sounds selfish, but uh, if you know me, you know I'll, I'll I'll give her my right arm. I'll do anything for her. But today I'm hungry, and um, she's working in, in her office right now upstairs, and um, I'm not going to disturb her because she always looks at me with a long face when I come in and bring her food. So, um, well, when I bring her food, when she's in the middle of something or on a call or something. So anyway, uh, anyway. Uh, I'm boring you guys. Let me get right to it here. So let's put the lid on here This is the lid and I'm gonna put it on Nice little rubber lid. Uh, one of the differences between this and the Vitamix is the Vitamix comes with a what's called a tamper and it uh, it allows you to go in there and sort of uh, uh, Chuck oh, I'm trying to get down here. It allows you to chuck the uh, stuff down in there like you take the lid off in the Vitamix and they have this tamper that you can use to sort of just uh, boom, that's uh, boom things down not boom, but you know chuck things down in there push it closer to the blade uh, Again the Vitamix system has a four blade system This is a two blade system which you can't see right now because I have it covered up But anyway, oh, I, you know what I got off topic here. Uh, I was talking to you about what I have in here Let me go back really quick Sorry guys. Uh, I don't typically do these types of videos, but it's going to become typical for me So I'll get better with these as it goes along um, So here's the deal. I've got in here some carrots I've got this, uh, uh, I'll tell you about that, what's on the top there in just a second, but I've got some carrots in there and I've got some broccoli, as you can see, I got about eight ounces of water. What you can't see that I have in there is, uh, I, I peeled and, and diced some fresh ginger root and, uh, I put a little bit of Himalayan pink sea salt in the water and that yellowish uh, hue you see to the water is olive oil. I, I put olive oil in everything. I love it. Um, so give me just a second and I'll show you. I got another seasoning I put in there. I'll show you guys what those are. Give me just a second. I'm going to put the phone camera down. I apologize for the screen going black here. Give me just a second. Okay, I'm back. So everybody that knows me knows that I like to cook with my nose. And, uh, this is a seasoning that my wife bought some time ago and I've never used it for anything. But uh, I took the top off and smelled it, and I said, you know what? This smells like it'll go really good with what I'm cooking here. And uh, I do cook with my nose. I'm a what I like to call a culinary artist. Uh, you don't have to go to school. You, some people are gifted with different things. Um, I learned to cook years ago. You just um, my nose tells me what seasonings are going to go. Oh, you know what? This isn't. It's not garlic. Sorry. Toss that to the side. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. So it wasn't garlic that I used. It was actually this uh, Okay, yeah, so you see the brand there. I'm, I'm not getting paid any money from Costco, but yeah, I do shop there I just said it a minute ago uh, they, they use this organic no salt seasoning a blend of 21 organic spices and ingredients blah say blah But this goes well with a lot of goes well really well with a lot of things some things I don't like it with uh, again I cook with my nose uh, and whatever I'm preparing whether it's a nice piece of lamb uh, some turkey 
whatever. I actually do, uh, I do some rabbit every now and then, uh, fish, other things. Those are some of the meats I eat. Uh, I'm not really big on beef. Uh, I do the blood type diet if you read my book. And uh, my blood type says I should avoid beef because it doesn't digest as well. But I also lift weights and sometimes I crave a piece of meat and I, I can't get home to cook some lamb fast enough. So I'll eat beef and take my digestive enzymes. But anyway, let's stick that to the side. So I've got the uh, I've got the Himalayan pink sea salt in here. And for some reason now I'm blurry. Okay, hang on. Okay, we got it. We're back in focus there. Uh, I do the Himalayan. And for those of you, if that was too blurry before and you couldn't see it, it's a little more crisp now. But uh, anyway, I've got the water, eight ounces of water, uh, Himalayan pink sea salt, just a pinch of it. And I got some uh, olive oil in there, a little bit of uh, uh, ginger, some uh, carrots, some broccoli, and that those seasonings that I just showed you. And now you're wondering what that blob is on the top. I just decided I wanted to give it a little twist today and sweeten it with just about a tablespoon of applesauce. So, and that's organic applesauce, mind you. So uh, here we go. I'm going to put it on top of the uh, base there. I'm going to put the lid on. The lid's nice and tight. And uh, I'm going to now go down here, what we talked about just a minute ago. And I'm going to hit the, this is weird doing this without looking at it. Oh, there we go. Soup button. And this thing's going to get really loud. Uh, I'm sorry, I had to turn that off. Uh, I should have warned you beforehand that uh, this Blendtec, one of the differences between this and the Vitamix is that the Blendtec is a lot louder. Now, they do make a uh, damper, uh, what's called a sound sound damper for it, but uh, you can put it over the top. I, you know, it doesn't bother me. I, I like to, if anything, it reminds me of being in a motor pool when I was uh, an army medic years ago. So it, uh, I, I don't mind how loud it is, but uh, I do apologize for not warning you guys and uh, it's really loud. But anyway, I'm going to take this down off the base and I'm going to show you what it looks like once you, you're done. Okay, and uh, let's see. What you can't, what you can't see is the uh, steam coming out of this thing, but uh, I'm going to pour some in the bowl here and uh, this soup setting gets pretty hot. Actually, you know what? This time it's not. Oh man, that tastes nice. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Okay, so it doesn't, uh, It the reason why there's not steam coming out of it is because I used frozen broccoli. But typically, if you're using fresh vegetables in this, it's going to get so hot that it's ready to eat. I mean, it's it's warm. In some cases, it's hot depending on the temperature of the vegetables that you put in here and the temperature of the water. So if you put room temperature water in there or, or even water that you maybe boiled in a kettle or something if you want to uh, skip right down to things getting hot. Yeah, that, that's the other option. When you put your water in there, you can actually, I, I, I'm old school, so I like to heat up water in a kettle for my tea and everything like that. But um, if you kind of want that, want that instant hot, you can put uh, eight ounces of, of hot water in there and then put your room temperature vegetables in there and go ahead with uh, what we talked about before. Hit that soup button and that soup is piping hot coming out of the, the, the top of this uh, carafe here. So anyway, I am going to, uh, I'm not gonna run it again, but uh, what I could do is I could put it in a pot on top of the stove and heat it up. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, give me just a second and uh, we'll let you, we'll, we'll see how this thing turned out. Be right okay, I'm back and what I wanted to show you guys before I sort of wrap this thing up, uh, right now we got the soup on the stove and I'm just uh, bumping the heat up on it just a little bit. And I'm going to pour it out into the bowl, let you see what the finished product looks like in a bowl before I dive into it because I'm very hungry. Uh, but anyway, before we do that, I just wanted to show you guys how I clean this Blendtec up. It's so easy to clean. I really love it. You, uh, I've got about 8 ounces of water, well, about 10 ounces of water in there. You don't want to go too much with it because then it'll shoot out the top. It'll be too much. But I did that and just a couple of drops of uh, your favorite dishwashing liquid. And uh, you put it back in there. Boom. I got it on top. Boom, we're right back on top of the base. And you can hit whatever one of these buttons you want. Uh, I'm not gonna go soup again because it gets so loud, but I'm gonna hit the smoothie button, just run it maybe uh, 15 seconds or so, and uh, I'll show you how I clean that. It's gonna get really soapy, and then I take it and some people just rinse it out and then dip it in there. Uh, well, when you see the guy do it at the display at Costco, he has this beautiful three-step process that probably nobody does at home. But anyway, I, I, I tend to soap it, get it nice and soapy, pour out the soapy water, um, I'll get a washcloth or whatever, or, or before I pour out the soapy water, I'll get a washcloth and just, 
It depends on if I had any oily type of residue in there. It's pretty clean already, but just for that extra security, I like to go in there and wipe it out with a, with a washcloth and then uh, just go around the rim, get it nice and clean. And then I rinse it out with hot water and boom, it's ready to go. So this is so simple to clean. Let me show you. Okay, that's it. You saw it. It's nice and soapy. Uh, yeah, so that's it. I'm going to pour that out and do just what I told you I was going to do. And then we're going to get back to that soup. Uh, be back with you. Folks, we're back here. As you can see, the soup is hot. I've just turned it off and I'm going to take it and transfer it to my bowl here. There's my bowl. And let's see if I can do this without spilling it. You can see that richness in there. And uh, that's about all I'm going to get in that bowl. We're going to take this back over to the stove top. Okay, there it is. And we're back here. So that's what it looks like. Uh, finished, the finished product, finished product. Uh, and gosh, I can't wait to get into that. Now, typically what I'll do with this is um, depending on how hungry I am, I've got something called uh, that I, I, I'll, I may dump some rice in here. Uh, I cook some white rice and some, it's uh, white basmati rice as well as some uh, some black rice that I made the other night. And uh, sometimes I'll, I'll throw that in there just for some extra calories and some fiber and protein. Um, you know what, why not? Let me show you guys what that black rice looks like because I'm gonna be showing you another dish that I like to do. And I'm gonna do that one tomorrow. Uh, today's Friday. You guys have seen my profile pictures or whatever or some of my t tweets. So you know that I'm a Clemson Tiger football fan. So uh, I'm gonna be making this really delicious bean and green dip uh, that I like to eat. Uh, when I'm watching football or anything like that. And I'll show you guys that uh, on Saturday. But for now, uh, I'll introduce you to that black rice. Give me just a minute. Let me let me, uh, let me me heat that up and uh, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Give me just okay, a minute. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. This is the black rice that I was telling you about. And uh, as you can see, that's sort of the texture of it. It's uh, really nice. I love it. It's, it's, it's a really, really, really textured rice. A uh, little bit... More tech. Actually, if you if you if you're talking about a scale, it's uh, white rice tends to be the softest of the three I've eaten, uh, texture-wise. And then you've got your brown rice, which is a little more textured than white rice, but not quite as textured as black rice. And black rice, the uh, the grains are smaller, and they're they're a lot more textured. But let me show you what the bag looks like. Uh, maybe there are other brands, but this is one I get. Uh, we actually get this online, and also I think they sell this at Costco as well. But uh, that's what the bag looks like. And I got a hole in the back of it, so I've had it in a Ziploc bag, but you can hear it pouring onto the uh, ca uh, countertop there. I'll clean it up in just a minute. But anyway, this is, this is what the bag looks like. This is by Village Harvest, and um, I really love black rice. So I like it in mixed with beans or in soups or in stews or whatever. It's probably not my favorite standalone rice because of... You know, the, the flavor is very rich and it's very textured, but I love it when you combine it with something like beans or, or soup or something like stew. Oh man, it is, uh, it, it really, it hammers it home. It's just, oh, I, you have to try it for yourself if you've never tried it, but I love black rice. And as you can see, it's very, very healthy for you. So I'm just gonna uh, take this now and I'm gonna slide that out of the way. I'm gonna bring my, uh, my soup back in here. This is my carrot ginger soup, uh, sweetened again with a little bit of applesauce. And I got my spices in there that I told you about. And what I do is I typically, I'll just take my black rice and dump it right in there. And uh, uh, that's probably going to be about enough of it right there. Now, this was pre-cooked. Um, I heated it up. I bumped it for about 20 seconds. I'm going to say that word that's ugly to some of you, microwave. Uh, yes, I mean, some of you ask about microwave. Hey, do you microwave anything? You know, I don't microwave nearly as much as I used to, but... Sometimes when I want to heat up my rice really quick, it's it's a lot easier to just hit, heat it up for 20 seconds in the microwave than it is to throw it in the oven or whatever like that. But um, anything else, food, uh, trays, entrees, if I go to a cookout or someone has dinner over their house and they have leftovers and I want to heat them up the next day, I'll typically throw them in a pan and heat it up in the oven just because I, I like old school. So anyway, um, and I don't have to worry about, oh, did I leave it in there too long? Did, uh, did whatever get over done or whatever in the microwave the oven just does a better job for me but in the case of something like rice i already kind of got it figured out now 
Um, what some of you might be wondering before I delve into this delicious, delicious, delicious looking bowl of soup and rice here is, hey, what Matt, you know, you didn't talk about the amount of carrots you put in there or the, the amount of broccoli. You talked about the amount of water, but you didn't talk about the carrots, the broccoli, how much ginger you used. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an artist with this. I'm not really, you know, there's a science side to cooking where you measure everything. And if you want it to taste the same way every time, you measure it and you write a recipe down or you go buy a recipe. But then there's the art side of it that says, you know what? It's nice to see what it might taste like tomorrow if I put a little bit more of this in it or the next time if I take some of that out and add this in there. That's the type of cook I am. And, you know, I typically don't get any complaints. Um, I've been married for about 21 years and, and my wife and I have been cooking for each other for longer than that. I mean, we've known each other for 25 years. And the thing is, um, you know, <laughs> I can probably count on one hand the number of times I didn't like something she cooked. And the same holds true for me. She could probably count on one hand the number of times she didn't like something that I prepared. So we uh, we both are, are, are pretty good cooks and we don't get complaints and we get a lot of requests to uh, bring things to, to, you know, family gatherings or cookouts or Thanksgiving or whatever. So anyway, uh, enough about me and enough about my cooking style. Sorry, I didn't. If you're looking for, hey, Matt, what measurement of this did you use? I'll tell you, I peeled five small carrots. And when I say small, it's all relative. It, you know, there's your big fat juicing carrots that feel like you're holding a tennis racket on one end. And then there's your smaller carrot. It depends on the size of the carrot. I mean, I would have to show you the carrot and then with it being a camera, it doesn't really give it the justice and show you what it really looked like in real life. So I peeled five skinny carrots. I mean, not super skinny, but not super fat either. And you see, that's probably not doing anything for you. It's not doing anything for me uh, trying to describe it. So anyway, uh, but anyway, there, there was about five carrots in there that I peeled and cut off and I used about uh, If I had to measure it, I would say I used about a fistful of frozen, frozen broccoli So just enough to fit into to the palm of my hand and for me to be able to close my hand around it without making a tight fist So that's about how much broccoli I used and then ginger I used maybe uh, I used probably my thumb <laughs> But again, that's not even relative because you you don't know how big my thumb is unless you're standing right in front of me looking at it. So um, you kind of got to go by feel, folks. If you want to have fun in the kitchen, you got to mix it up. You got to mix it up. So anyway, I'm going to take a bite of this. And um, I'm going to say, uh, you know, happy weekend to you. And I'm looking forward to showing you guys my bean and green dip. It is so good. And um, that's about it. If you guys got any questions, hit me up on my blog. This video is, is going to be on YouTube or it is on YouTube now if you're looking at this. But it's also, I, I, I like to keep all of my things neatly in one place at my blog, and that's www.mdtopper.com. So one second and I'll sign out. All right, folks, this is going to be going to be kind of hard to do. I'll try it to uh, it's be a lot easier if my wife were here holding it, but I dare not bother her when she's working because she knows I don't like to be bothered when I'm working either. But anyway, I'm going to stir this up just a little bit. And, um, you know, I'm looking as I'm looking down at this right now, you can see the uh, consistency is going to depend on how much water you use and how much product you use. Uh, another thing that you can do with this is when you're blending it, you can go ahead and put your rice in it uh, before you blend it up. Uh, so you can put your rice in there with your vegetables before it's blended and turned into the soup. Or if you soup it first and then you want to put your rice into it, then it'll give it, it'll make it a little bit creamier. It'll give it a little bit more texture. And uh, but I'm 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 about to go in because I'm so hungry. Hang on. Oh man, that's nice. Mmm, 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 mmm. So nice. It could probably use a little pinch of salt, just a little tiny. You know what? Actually, no, because the flavor hits me on the back end. I don't need any salt for it. This is, this is good. Now I'm gonna tell you why I like this, and I'll tie this back up with the book, and then we'll wrap it up. When you, there's something about eating. Fresh soup. And when I say fresh soup, I'm talking about soup you make in your blend tech, your Vitamix or whatever, your Ninja if it does soup. Um, th there's something about making fresh soup that it just, it goes right where it needs to go. Uh, not even a whole minute after you swallow it. You can feel it strengthening your body up. So, I mean, there's something to be said about eating live food. Now, I'm not a raw raw vegan. Um, I never will be. I'm just, this is not something I'm interested in. But uh, at the same time, and I'm, I'm wiping sweat off because it's a little warm in here. But this is so, 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 so good. And um, I love eating fresh soup because it just makes me feel good. And um, now don't get me wrong. If you're into the high-calorie meals or whatever, 
do what you have to do. I said on my blog last week, fuel up for the purpose. So if you're, I mean, I'm not just going with this if I got to go play a tennis match because there's not enough calories here. But um, you know what? This might be enough to get me through one set. And then maybe I go with a cliff bar or a protein bar or something like that in my tennis bag after. But there's something um, that is, is just, I don't know, that's just, I don't even know the word to say. There's something that is just so good and so organic about eating whole food and eating fresh, fresh soup. So folks, listen, you want to feel good, especially as we transition from fall to winter and the cold season picks up and the flu season picked up, whatever. I'm no doctor. I tell you that in my book. But there's something that uh, to be said for eating real food. It just your body knows what to do with it. Your body knows exactly what to do with real food. You're not going to get that in a bag of chips. Um, you're not going to get that in um, a piece of jerky or whatever. And don't get me wrong, I like eating those things from time to time too. But I understand that if 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 my body, if I want my body to do what it needs to do, what I want it to do, then I got to give it the fuel that it uses for that task. And if you want your body to be strong, you have to at some point get a considerable amount of live food in you. And so to tie this back into the book, this is what I do, folks. I, 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 want, to, I want to stay strong. I don't ever want to face that bully that I had to fight against in, in 2010 slash 2011. Um, I thought I had it all figured out back then. I was eating a lot of things that weren't necessarily good for you. But uh, I would throw in a small side salad and think, oh, okay, well, I'm healthy because I'm eating a small side salad or, you know, I'll eat five chicken biscuits today and then tonight i'll eat a salad it doesn't work that way just you you gotta you gotta balance that out but the the, the, the other thing about doing these fresh soups is it allows you to get more vegetables into you than you'll ever be able to chew so um and not just that it's already broken down so those nutrients those plant-based nutrients are getting right to where they need to go a lot faster it helps with the digestion because your body doesn't have to break it down the soup button on this blend text does it for you it breaks it down already so when you get it, the, the breakdown process is minimal. Your body can go right to work using it. So folks, I won't bore you anymore. I can talk about this stuff all day. I love it. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity to read my book yet, please do. It's titled From Fear to Faith, A Survivor Story. And um, folks, I'm just, I, mm, I'm, I'm passionate about, about people being healthy and, and living well and eating. When you eat well, you feel better. Your, your mind works better. You think more clearly. Uh, just... Folks, you got to arm yourself with starting starting to eat by starting to eat real food if you're not doing it already. So I'm I'm going to be you know in the coming weeks or whatever, or just whenever I feel inspired to do so, I'm going to do a video and just kind of share with you the things I do to keep to keep my engine going and going strong. And um, I'm going to shut up now because I've realized I'm rambling and well I'm not really rambling, but I, I'm just passionate about this stuff. So, um, folks, you see that. We got to get Florida State. We got to get you out of there. Look, Florida State, we love you. You've had your chance. Uh, I pulled for, not pulled for you, but, you know, um, you you guys, I pulled for the ACC when they're playing against the SEC. So if you're SEC and you're watching this right now and you're mad at me, I'm sorry. Uh, there are a lot of teams in the SEC I like. There are a couple, uh, or one I don't like, but I won't, I won't tell you who that team is because I don't want to piss anybody off. But um, <laughs> there's a one in whatever the number of t uh, teams in the SEC are right now. I'm not. I'm not trying to do that math right now. I don't, I don't know. don't care. I got to get off this phone, off this video. But anyway, uh, I got to meet a friend of mine here in about 25 minutes. So I'm going to wolf this soup down and, uh, and go and meet him. And then I'm going to get back to work and get this video uploaded. But anyway, folks, listen, um, when I say I love you, I'm not playing with it. I mean that. Um, I, I love you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I don't care where you're from. Um, you know what? And I'm not trying to preach or anything like that, but God loves us and he, you know, he, he, he provides for us even though we, most of us don't deserve it. Uh, none of us deserves it really because we're imperfect. But um, I, I want to tell you I love you and I, I want to see you do well. So please keep going. Check out my blog. It's www.mdtalford.com. And check out my book. The paperback is on sale for $16. Uh, you can get it from me at www.mdtalford.com and I will autograph it for you. Or if you don't care about it being autographed, you can order it from Amazon. And uh, my paperback is available on Amazon. Again, the paperback is $16 uh, plus whatever tax or shipping it, it that goes with that. Uh, well, you buy it from me, you know, you, the shipping, whatever, gets it to about $21, whatever. whatever. I don't, I don't, I, it, it's on there. Go check it out. Uh, the the ebook normally is priced at $9.99, but we're doing 50% off through the holidays. So that's a holiday special. We're doing 50% off from now through January 2nd. The ebook is available on Kindle and iBooks. So check that out. It's a great read, folks. And uh, you'll see some of the tools that helped me to uh, come back from a, a, a difficult 
uh, battle with uh, a very rare and deadly form of the C word. I don't like to say it, but um, I'm, I'm here and I want to just encourage you guys to keep going. And I, I don't ever want to see anybody come down with what I came down with or any flavor of it. Uh, I do, I, I do want to see everybody thrive. I love you guys. Hey, listen, eat well, get out and do some exercise and just, uh, you know, just show some love to somebody. Smile at them when you walk down the street. Say, hey, what's up, man? Say, God bless you, whatever. I don't know. Just, just show some love. Show some love. Anyway, see you guys later. Have a great weekend. And I'll be back tomorrow with my bean and green dip uh, in, in, in preparation for my Clemson Tigers playing probably what's going to be our toughest game of the year against Florida State. See you, folks. Bye.